In tonight's Tax Insider, another short-term spending bill. House Speaker Paul Ryan says lawmakers need more time to pass a $1.1 trillion omnibus. Federal agencies will run out of money this Friday at midnight. The stopgap measure will keep the lights on. Joining me with the latest is Ryan Alexander, president of the nonpartisan Taxpayers for Common Sense. All right, Ryan, let's start with a few definitions. What does omnibus mean and what does it pay for? So an omnibus is when they take all of the appropriations bills for however long from all the different agencies and the different subcommittees responsible for them and roll them all together. So that's the omnibus is that they're throwing them together into one big bus of a piece of a legislation. All right, and it's clear that no one wants to shut down the government. A short-term spending bill will give lawmakers some breathing room. That said, how do these extensions work? How is funding calculated and who benefits? So the way they calculate spending in theory is that they just extend spending for however period of period of time of the length of the short-term bill based on the previous year's bills. However, most years the president sends up a list of anomalies that include some plus ups for programs that even have, you know, have increased needs even in the short term mm -hmm. or th that have already been significantly cut back. You know, people don't benefit too much from these. These are mostly just just a little bit better than shutting the government down. Um, but programs that would be cut back significantly or zeroed out do benefit because they continue to get funding at the same level that they had in the prior year. Some Republicans are holding out for policy riders. One would block new rules on power plant emissions. Another would curb new clean water rules. How do these end up in a spending bill? So Congress has to pass spending bills, but they don't have to pa pass policy bills. So sometimes during a spending fight, because these bills are what they call must-pass bills, they have to get through, uh, people attach policy riders, as they say. So it's saying, for example, we're appropriating the money that goes to the Environmental Protection Agency, but there is a rider that says none of that money may be spent on implementation of the clean power plant, or none of that may be spent implementing a new rule on to redefining waters of the United States or a new, any kind of new rule. We see these a lot when there is one party in charge of Congress and one party in charge of the White House. When, right. when they want to see something different, they try to attach it to a must-pass bill. That's a good point. Now, Ryan, another key item includes extending dozens of popular tax breaks for individuals and businesses. What's the latest here? So on the tax extender bills, we'll remember that you know we have to retroactively extend these bills back to the beginning of 2015. And the package that was uh, announced by Chairman Brady of Ways and Means is that this is a, a two-year extension, take, takes care of 2015 and 2016. And it, he says it's paid for by tightening up the rules on real estate investment um, trusts, which are kind of a, a loophole in the code that people have been exploiting by putting all, kind of dumping all their real estate holdings into a tax-free vehicle. So by tightening that, he says he'll be able to pay for extending all these various kind of cats and dogs extenders, some of which are very big, that, but that get extended only on a short-term basis. And I'd like to talk briefly about inversions, Ryan. Tomorrow, Democratic presidential candidate Hillary Clinton will unveil a proposal for a new exit tax aimed at cracking down on corporate inversions. What do we know about this? So an inversion is when a domestic company decides to move its kind of headquarters to a low-tax country, either through an acquisition or a merger. And what, what, I, what I understand about the, the exit tax proposal is that it would just be a, a tax, a one-time fee on that kind of transaction, which would reduce the incentive on, on moving your headquarters to a lower tax jurisdiction. But at the same time, it, it certainly doesn't address the entire problem. I don't want to sound political because I'm not, but instead of adding an exit tax, why not lower the corporate tax to encourage, encourage them to stay here? Just saying. Well, I think that's the key issue, is really what needs to be done is comprehensive tax reform. It's clearly an issue that cor corporations feel like, I might get a better deal if I go overseas. We have this incredibly complex corporate code that's riddled with breaks that are targeted at specific industries, and some of the industries that don't get those, those special breaks feel like... Like, I'm better off if I go to Ireland. Yeah. So doing comprehensive tax reform would be a much better, more efficient uh, way to address this problem. I mean, we may rail a bit against big business, Wall Street, and, and corporations, but take a look in your 401k and see what the listings are that you hold, and that's who you own. Right. All right, experts say U.S. companies are hoarding roughly $2 trillion in profits abroad in order to reduce their taxes. What kind of impact could that have on our economy? You know, this is a really big question. First of all, there's some people who think that number is even higher. Uh, and some, of course, would say that's a little bit of an overstatement. But if those if those dollars came back, the United States were invested in projects in the United States, obviously, it could have a significant 
impact on our economy. That said, we don't know if that they came back to the United States, they would be invested here. We just don't know. There's just a lot of, there's a lot of unknowns about this, and we really need to do that big comprehensive tax reform package because even though it would be really messy and difficult to do because it requires Congress to make get big along. decisions and make get along. Make decisions and get along. It's, the, it's the best way to go about it. Is it going to happen in 2016? I don't think it will happen in 2016. We'll see what happens in the presidential election. I do think that Speaker Ryan will keep attention on this issue and maybe they'll do hearings so we can see where the direction that Congress is going. But I think that as is the case in a lot of presidential election years, what happens in Congress this year will be about defining the differences in the parties, not about coming together to solve problems that we all face. Excellent point. Good to have you on the show again. Ryan Alexander, president of Taxpayers for Common Sense. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Ryan.